This is past, present, and future of MySQL invariants, which as we've been chatting for the past 10 minutes, obviously contains a bunch of humorous stories that aren't in the talk, and instead I'm going to tell other ones. Um, I'm Stuart Smith. I work for Pocona. Uh, I work for MySQL AB, uh, the company behind MySQL since 2004 in MySQL Cluster. Got bought by Sun, worked on MySQL Cluster and Drizzle there. Rackspace on Drizzle and, and now at Pocona which is MySQL support consulting and development. Incidentally, I have books written by a couple of people here, High Performance MySQL. I have no idea how I want to do to give them away, but like, if you're interested and like, you're up front first and have an interesting question, they're somehow yours, but I'm not taking them home. Uh, ghosts of MySQL past. Let's go through a bit of uh, history. So in 1979, there was this thing called Unireg, uh, which had a text UI to an ISAM data store. So index sequential access method, right? So you have bunch of rows written to disk in series, and you have indexes on top of those, and a text interface around that for forms and uh, reports. And in 86, this actually was Unireg on Unix. Uh, since you have forms to enter data, uh, this is where the FRM file comes from for MySQL. So it actually has its heritage somewhere between 1979 and 1986, and it really, really shows. Um, this text UI for doing 80 by 24 VT100 interfaces for entering rows into the database is still generated and stored in the FRM file to this day. Uh, but nothing reads it. Fast forward a bit, uh, MSQL was a separate project that came around, uh, which is a small SQL server. There was source available, but it wasn't free software. And originally, uh, Monty tried to plug in uh, the ISAM engine uh, from Unireg into MSQL, but didn't really fit for a variety of reasons. Ra rah, rah, MySQL came into existence. So in 1995, uh, what we had was uh, MySQL. OK, well done. MySQL AB. Uh, and uh, MySQL AB was founded in 95. There was MySQL 1.0. Uh, no one knows what happened to 2.0 or 3.0 or 3.1 through 19. But the next sort of thing you will find in any prehistory is uh, 1996 with 3.19. Uh, and in year 2000, the license was switched to a GPL license. Uh, and this was actually kind of a big risk for MySQL AB, the company, because that was possibly affecting the entire revenue model of a really small company without any funding. It also saw the, the birth of the business model that the company went through, which was dual licensing. Uh, the big thing this was, was the client library was GPL, which meant if you're a GPL app, then fine, you can link to the client library. If you're writing commercial software, guess what? You get to buy licenses. And this was like a really significant uh, percentage of MySQL revenue, like incredibly so. As in discussions of, hey, why don't we like BSD the client libraries or like, or LGPL them again, uh, was like, oh my god, no, have you seen how much revenue that is? We couldn't pay you all uh, kind of deal. But the big thing happened in uh, about May of 2000, where replication came into existence. So in 3.23.15, uh, the first MySQL replication came into existence. And this was about two weeks of one guy hacking, right? So it was two weeks of someone hack, sitting down and hack. So how do you do this when you have uh, a database which doesn't do MVCC and it's just full table locks? Well, it's really simple. You log all the SQL statements uh, and then send them over a TCP socket to a slave and then replay them, as in just run the SQL statements again. And it turns off, out that this kind of mostly works, <laughs> at least when you don't have concurrency. Uh, so the big benefits was it was easy to set up and use. Uh, it only took two weeks of one developer's time, and that's like a huge feature. And the other thing was it took until 2010 for Postgres to catch up with that. <laughs> like it was Postgres 9.0 before it had queryable read-only slaves in, in core that you could just use out of the box. So you know, being 10 years ahead is probably worth it, even though uh, much of that code almost survives to this day in various hack forms and all wants to make you cry. Um, so it is actually the age of a decent bottle of whiskey ahead of Postgres. So um, <laughs> back to 2001. In 2001, we had 3.23 went GA. Uh, so there's many people who will cite 3.23 forever. That was like the last true awesome release of MySQL. And many people stayed on this for way longer than you would think would ever happen. It did what it did, and it did what it did uh, fairly well. Uh, but there was one thing that came in after 3.23 GA, amazingly enough, was the NODB storage engine. And this actually wasn't from the MySQL company, right? This is from a Finnish company called Innobase Oi. Uh, and this was brought transactions and MVCC and foreign keys uh, and that kind of thing to MySQL. It sort of shoehorned it into the interface. I mean, because the ISAM engine originally came from Unireg, uh, it was kind of modular-ish. 
Uh, and so there was a sufficient enough hooks to sort of shoehorn with a whole bunch of glue, sticky tape, and a sledgehammer uh, to get the NODB storage engine in there and sort of getting transactions working. Uh, other things that happened, first round of venture capital, uh, the CEO of MySQL, Martin Mikos, was, uh, came in in 2001 and saw the company through uh, its acquisition by Sun. Uh, but the real interesting thing from like a free software point of view is in 2002, MySQL sued uh, Progress Newsphere for copyright violation. And this was actually the first test of the GPL in court. And a real interesting thing out of this was this small Swedish company uh, with you know, a small amount of funding uh, and a bunch of help from you know, uh, Software Freedom Law Center and the like managed to have a judge in a courtroom say that the GPL is actually enforceable and it's a real license. And so that was kind of a, a big thing there. Uh, this company created a storage engine called Gemini, which is another transactional storage engine. Uh, it was eventually GPL'd, because it turns out that's what you had to do when you have derivative works. Uh, but they sort of abandoned it there, and there was a bunch of sort of funny history around there. Uh, in 2003, more venture capital. Uh, venture capital has a very interesting effect to how a company operates uh, and the like. There is an odd... Uh, uh, realism, like now working for a company that is organically grown and sort of, you know, if you lose money all the time, then you go broke really quickly. Um, uh, and that's kind of an interesting thing to do. So this had some effect on the company as well. Uh, but the good news was it could really heavily invest in technology. So the engineering team grew a fair bit. Uh, 4.0 came around in 2003. Uh, the same time as there was 4.0 was the new stable release. Uh, 4.1 and 5.0 were sort of in alpha. So there was two development versions of sort of the next version and the one after that at various states of stability. Uh, so you sort of had three current trees being worked on by not a huge amount of people, uh, which is possibly interesting for how development went for the next several years. Also something got started then, which was an SAP partnership. So SAP, you may know, does these giant business apps that sort of run way too many businesses and make some people cry. Uh, the whole idea was, uh, hey, SAP thought, hey, maybe we could run all of SAP stuff on top of MySQL. Uh, and this pushed MySQL in a really odd direction. So basically, it was explained to me that the bootstrap script for like most of SAP stuff, as in like the before you actually run the software at all, just to bootstrap the database, creates tens of thousands of tables and several gigabytes of data. Um, and in 2003 in MySQL 4.0, it really didn't like that. There were many problems with that, especially on the hardware of the day. Um, so why would SAP be interested in this? Well, then you could run SAP without buying Oracle database licenses, which is especially humorous uh, where MySQL has ended up now. So this is all about adding a million features for enterprise, right? Because enterprise software is what we do. So SAP being enterprise, uh, this was one of the much more different features inside the database than everyone who was using MySQL at the time, right? You saw all these large scale websites using MySQL because, hey, read only scale out with replication, really easy to set up really easy to install and it takes 15 minutes. Uh, and so with this focus on sort of enterprise features for SAP, remember this is back in 2003. So this is before MySQL had views, stored procedures, triggers, curses, prepared statements, precision math, uh, performance in alter table, SQL access to logs, deadlock information. Uh, you couldn't use a forward slash in table names. Uh, before performance statistics, really Unicode came into being in much. Uh, explain for insert, update, and delete, still not there. Uh, partitioning, row-level binary locking, logging, as in replication, not just using SQL statements, or fractional seconds in temporal types. Um, and some of those are still not here today, but these are what SAP needed, and none of these were in MySQL at the time. Uh, so that really pushed the database in a different direction. In 2003 also, MySQL itself, so a startup company with venture capital, acquired another company. Uh, and acquired a company called Elzato, which is a spin out of Ericsson, which worked on a network database called NDB. It was a in-memory cluster database with some uh, footholds in the telco market used to run uh, cell phone HLR databases. So basically, at this point in the world, it's actually really hard to go somewhere in the world and not make a phone call that doesn't go through the software. Uh, the early versions of NDB I could best describe for availability purposes were either 5.9s or 0.9s. <laughs> uh, all your stuff would work either really well and would be really quite stable there. And in fact, you know, the office in which the, the cluster team was was also shared with uh, one of the Swedish ISPs. And they used NDB for like DNS and DHCP and the like. So it was like really reliable there because uh, you know, the guys who wrote it right next door too. So either your app worked or exploded in a pile of mess, uh, one of the two. And that saw its first integration with MySQL in MySQL 4.1, which was 2004. Incidentally, 
just before I joined MySQL. Um, by this time, MySQL IB had hired just about all outside contributors because, oh my god, we need developers to work on this project. Oh look, you've made a patch. Would you like a job? <laughs> uh, that was pretty much it and how a bunch of developers got hired. This had the side effect of that means you've just hired your external developer community and now there is no external developer community because you've just hired them all. So MySQL's roots are sort of not being sort of an open project so much, is actually traced back a fair way due to just how you hire people as well. Uh, so this is not sort of anything new or anything. And 2005 was sort of the year of MySQL 5.0 instability. So 5.0 being in development after you know, 4.1 went out, uh, the instability of the 5.0 tree, which is going to be the next development release, really started to affect developers, right? The SAP team had a real hard time doing anything from benchmarking to get anything running because as soon as they'd pull a new version into their tree, new things would blow off and explode and you know, things would fly everywhere. And so it was really hard to work on deliverables as teams. Um, so this was so bad, essentially continuous integration was like invented uh, kind of deal. I came from somewhere. So it was like so horrifically broken that it was like not test before push, but at least show people how broken things were. I mean, there was a possibility that for a bunch of platforms, you couldn't actually compile the server without leaving processes around that you couldn't kill Dash 9. Like, there was like some really broken things. Uh, the worst thing is there's actually more unstable trees than the 5.0 development tree at the same time. Uh, so the picture was even worse if you were looking beyond the next GA release. Um, and this leads us into the era of acquisitions because there are businesses involved and what are good of business people that don't acquire things. Uh, in 2005, Oracle acquired Innovase. So the transactional MVCC engine that everyone was using is now owned by Oracle. Uh, free database versus Oracle, right? Oracle, very proprietary. Uh, this is referred to as InnoDB Friday uh, by a number of people. I can't remember if it was Friday or not, but you know, sounds like everything went in fire anyway. Uh, in October, so around the same time as well, 5.0 went GA, and I put GA in quotes because the best description anyone can give of the 5.0 GA release is shit. Um, the best thing was I had open bugs as a developer in the company where it's run this query, get the result set. Now compare that result set to if you run it as a view. You don't even get the same number of rows back, let alone the same query results. Things were really broken. None of the new features worked is the best way to do it. There was an increasing feeling inside development that increasingly things were becoming marketing driven rather than market driven. So instead of going, you know, where our customers were and where new customers could be, it's like, well, what can we do best for marketing? Uh, if you want a stage of how bad 5.0's GA was, it took us over a year to use 5.0 internally for the support database. So the thing we were running like our critical infrastructure on, it took a year from 5.0 GA before we would dog food it. So that was kind of bad. So since InnoDB was acquired, uh, the Maria project started inside in 2005. Uh, this is not MariaDB, this is Maria, a transactional storage engine to be an InnoDB replacement. So the basic idea was to take my IZAM, you know, non-transactional, full table lock, not crash safe, fork it, create another tree there, and make it be all those things and improve things. Uh, because when you have a giant quality product problem with your main product, you should be distracted by a new project and put a lot of senior engineers on it. <laughs> Uh, the best thing was uh, GA is expected end of 2007. Eight years later, no such thing exists, even though it's gone across to another company. Uh, in 2006, a company called Netfrastructure was acquired. So this was um, Jim Starkey and Ann Harrison. I came along to work in MySQL. Jim Starkey, you may be aware, invented uh, certain uh, essential relational database things such as multiverse multi-version concurrency control, and the idea of the blob. Blob being that thing from the movie, not binary large object. That was marketing crap. It's the blob from the movie. So Netfrastructure was acquired. They had a transactional storage engine, and this could possibly incorporate into MySQL and solve the InnoDB problem. And this was going to be called Falcon. Acquire existing tech, integrate it with MySQL. Uh, it was not complete or integrated, but work started due to be completed later this year. Um, other efforts also started that never went anywhere, like there's Revive Gemini, see if we could use that. Um, I was always a proponent of, hey, we should just turn MySQL cluster into also a disk-based database and it would probably take less time uh, than any of the other alternatives. And so far, the way all the other alternatives have gone, I'm still right. Uh, so that's kind of uh, an idea. One thing exposed here was the pluggable storage engine architecture. So this big marketing slide of, hey, you can plug in new storage engines. The warts and all were exposed of this, right? Brilliant marketing, absolutely brilliant marketing. The technology behind it was, uh, oh my god. Uh, the conversations went 
Jim goes, is it really like this? Is this really what you're meant to do as an engine? It's like, yes, yes it is. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's not my fault. Uh, I mean, MySQL cluster took arguably two to four years to become really stable and integrated. Uh, so how anyone else was expected to do this while still having to develop the database engine? Uh, who knows? And it typically takes you know, that long as well. But somebody else outside the company as well started a storage engine project. In 2006, uh, a company called Primebase uh, had a project called PBXT. And this was a third-party transactional engine, which was sort of log-based, right? It had a log-based type design, which was kind of interesting. It had really promising performance characteristics, and it managed to last until about 2011. Turns out it's really hard to be a profitable storage engine vend vendor if you are not acquired by Oracle or MySQL, or now just Oracle. Uh, so it's hard to be that, but they last a long time. It was really interesting and really sort of pushed people along in performance for the engines that they actually used. Uh, there are also some surviving really specialized one, but in ODB, it turns out, is just really that good uh, compared to other things and is generally ahead. Uh, the first fork of MySQL was actually 2006. So talking about forks, it was actually back in 2006. Because 5.0 took such a goddamn long time and 5.1 was not going to be ready anytime soon at all, the MySQL cluster team actually needed to get releases out that could be called stable so people could deploy them in just, say, large enterprises and like large telcos and the like. Big customers paying millions of dollars wanted to deploy something that wasn't branded alpha or pre-alpha at the least. So we started our own fork. Uh, this fork still exists and still goes, and many features in the server were actually there first before they were in the MySQL server themselves. So things like row-based replication, uh, circular replication with conflict resolution, and online DDL all happened there first. Big thing about MySQL cluster releases, they got releases out, or we got releases out, we got them out on time, and we got point releases done that affect real customer issues. And this is like a really successful part of that product. In 2007, somebody noticed people use Windows. Like huge, pe downloads from the website were like 60% Windows or something insane, because of course that doesn't count people downloading from distro repos. Uh, it turns out that the Windows story kind of sucked, uh, not as much as Postgres Windows story did, but enough that it was still frustrating if you're a Windows person. Uh, I mean, it wasn't using necessarily native Win32 calls in all sorts of places. Just about everything worked in a Unix way rather than a Windows way. So if you're a Windows person, it was just odd. And it was all slower than what you'd expect. So the Windows Task Force came about, which in case you haven't noticed, has the best team abbreviation ever. <laughs> I love it. It's still my favorite thing in the entire world. Uh, also in 2007, the first MySQL 6.0 Alpha came out. Um, so remember now, MySQL 5.6 is the latest stable release. The 6.0 Alpha was actually in 2007. Uh, alpha being the incredible keyword. 5.0 at this time was kind of starting to behave and people could probably switch their workloads over to 5.0 without wanting to go and murder people. Uh, 5.1 was nowhere near ready and there was also rumors of various MySQL 6.1 trees that added even more instability than the alpha that was 6.0. In January 2008, Sun acquired MySQL, big thing, company meeting in Oh, where's the god-awful city? Orlando! Oh my god, I'm never going out there in my life. Um, we seriously considered flying to Seattle for coffee instead. Um, <laughs> especially after it was acquired for $1 billion. It's like we could totally just expense like Sun's Dime to go to Seattle for coffee. Uh, the, also, 2008 was a really interesting year because it was the year of the random query generator, or I like to refer to it, the destroyer of projects. Uh, this was an open source implementation of essentially what was state of the art in database testing at Microsoft in 1997. And so the lead developer, when all the, uh, you know, all us developers were really excited about this, was basically standing up the front of him going, why are you happy about this? This was state of the art in 97. Why are you happy about this now? <laughs> and it really showed sort of the true quality of the server. Uh, basically, you have a grammar for describing what type of queries you would like generated and sort of what type of queries and to what ratios. Uh, and then it generates queries that fit this grammar. So like a Lex-like grammar, it generates them and then throws them at the server. And then the server core dumps. And what it then does is pairs down the test case to a smallest one and then deduplicates the uh, tracebacks because the server crashed so damn often and so damn frequently in there that you would needed all that automation to do it. Uh, also, the humorous thing was, hey, you're going to verify that the data get back is correct? Well, when the server stops segfolding four queries in, I'll think about it, uh, was the answer. Uh, so basically, four years later, segfold, rinse, repeat. It put heavy dents in the optimizer in 6.0. Basically, it killed MySQL 6.0. Falcon found huge amounts of issues in that, especially with crash recovery. And every scalable MySQL uh, uh, system since uh, generally doesn't return the right number of rows as NODB does, let alone the correct contents. 
Uh, in June 2008, uh, Brian, the Director of Software Ar Architecture at MySQL, uh, followed by myself and others, forked MySQL 6.0 and started doing what we wanted, which is to create a database server that was small, understandable by humans, modular, uh, that was fast and designed for the modern web, right? No one needs to care about EBC Dick, seriously. Who gives a crap? Uh, UTF-8, everything's POSIX. Very skunk works. Very skunk works. We were going to announce it at OzCon instead of to anyone in the company. It's, if, I, if you have not forked the project and done something that could legitimately get you fired for cause, I totally recommend it because it's great fun. Uh, uh, this, this misses the story of the best email in the entire world. But um, uh, Sun uh, actually saw this as valuable. So the CTO group inside Sun saw this as valuable, and so we all got to work on it full time because uh, they actually had looked at some of the tech inside MySQL then. So we're all working at sort of a next generation database. Uh, which was a great amount of time. Also in this year, finally, after three years since 5.0, 5.1 was released, right? And if it was released 60, six weeks later, I would have won the $20 bet I made with the head of engineering at the time uh, rather than lost it, because it turns out that it was just six weeks before the end of the year. Um, if you're wondering where the OpenStack uh, CI process comes from and a whole bunch of developer stuff, it's our experiences through Drizzle and all of the failings of MySQL. And a bunch of the people involved in setting it up basically went, we can do it right this time. Uh, and so it was sort of a direct descendant, which is kind of a cool thing. Also at the end of 2008, um, Al Delta came around. Um, so MySQL was so bad as accepting outside contributions because you know, it hired everyone. Uh, there were a few patches that were sitting around. Al Delta was a patch that there and it lasted about a year. And Pocono Server started then, which was basically Pocono aggregating a bunch of patches that they constantly applied for big customers into one release and building binaries. In 2009, uh, Monty Vidinius left Sun, so one of the founders uh, left Sun and went off to start his own company. Uh, in March, the final 6.0 alpha was ever released before it was taken round the back and shot like it deserved. Uh, four months after the 5.1 GA, it was dead. Two years of alphas and it was going nowhere, obviously. Uh, in, also in 2009, they started to switch to a new development model, uh, which had the odd idea of not merging rubbish and like possibly completing features before merging them, uh, possibly testing before merging, and then creating sort of stable releases that were usable. Uh, and this was sort of a bunch of influenced by what we were doing at Drizzle as well. And it was sort of influenced by a bunch of sort of the grown-ups at Sun, where you can say many bad things about Solaris, and I did frequently and often uh, to people inside Sun, to the extent that someone sent me a link to a review of adding dash dash color to Solaris LS. Um, someone spent engineering time on that. That cost Sun money in like 2009. Um, but uh, the idea was to have a developer model that was actually sustainable to get releases out. And the sort of the grown-ups arrived who, one thing you can't say about Solaris is it did actually not incredibly break things with each new release, at least from a stability point of view, ish, right? Uh, so let's go on to April 2009. April 2009, Oracle acquired Sun, which is the most hilarious thing you can get from your partner back home is saying, Oracle bought you. Not funny, it's 5 a.m. and I have to give a talk, not funny. Uh, but it did actually happen. And after a whole bunch of things through the EU and the like, it went through in January 2010. This of course meant that Falcon, remember, shipping in late 2006, uh, it's now 2009, was gonna be canned, right? There had been no stable release. Uh, and now with the amount of time it went from when Oracle acquisition was announced, because Oracle already owned Innovase, so InnoDB, uh, until January, they can't fire anyone because that's making a substantive change to the business during all that period. And really, well, what the hell are you gonna do for that whole time doing work when you know your project's gonna be canned? So we all really felt for the Falcon devs. We're just kind of stuck in a rock and a hard place of like, well, I've got a good few months to find some interesting work or something else to work on. And some of them have gone in to do MySQL server stuff, which is really great, uh, which is good. Uh, why did uh, Falcon fail? Basically, there's a big management focus on feature and performance parity with InnoDB. What you may notice was missing with that was stability or reliability, right? So it was like the fastest engine on the planet for crashing and corrupting data. <laughs> Which turns out to not have been uh, as useful as one may think. And the switch away from that was too late. Um, there was a brilliant document written that outlined all the problems that is totally probably company confidential somewhere, but um, is a great read if you ever manage to find a stash of former MySQL email. Um, but what else happened? My, MariaDB 5.1, so remember not Maria the storage engine, but MariaDB as we know now, the first MariaDB 5.1 beta was October 2009, so before the Oracle acquisition closed. 
Um, and this was from Monty Program AB. So Monty set up a small company, tried to do a hacker business model, hired a bunch of people, uh, and several developers left to go join him there. Did this affect the MySQL server team at Oracle? Yeah, a bit, right? It certainly did. But they have seem to have recovered now, so it's all cool. Uh, in February, first MariaDB 5.1 GA release. So this was sort of MySQL 5.1 plus a bunch of other patches and work. Uh, in MariaDB 5.2 GA was a short while later, so they're incorporating a bunch of stuff and getting out a new stable release quickly. Uh, and in December of 2010, it turns out that people at Sun and Oracle had been working on things, of course, because there were a bunch of developer releases coming up. And this was MySQL 5.5 went GA. And this was easily sort of the, the best GA release of MySQL for a long time. It had a bunch of uh, InnoDB performance improvements, really narrow in scope, but what it delivered actually delivered, as opposed to being incredibly broken, which was a, a pleasant change. 2011, it turns out, was a really quiet year. Um, people worked on things. Uh, and in February 2012, MariaDB did a 5.3 release. And this was not based on MySQL 5.5. So although MySQL 5.5 was out, MariaDB was still based on MySQL 5.1. And by this time, MariaDB was a big delta, right? They'd incorporated a bunch of things from the optimizer from the now defunct 6.0, and at least they said they fixed it all. Uh, and they were trying to maintain 5.1, 5.2, and 5.3 all at once while working on probably 5.5 and above. So this was a small group of people working on sort of more branches of the server than MySQL itself with significantly more people, like an order of magnitude more, had failed to do. And so merging to new MySQL releases was getting harder and harder and harder. And so if you look at like the delta between your know, bug fixes got into MySQL and hit Maria, it was months. Um, it wasn't until April where they got the first MariaDB 5.5 GA, which is literally just merging MySQL and Maria together. Uh, 16 months after MySQL 5.5. So if you really wanted all the performance improvements in InnoDB and the like, it was a 16-month wait. Uh, big news, no acquisition in 2012. Uh, that was, you know, a nice break. Um, and in February 2013, MySQL 5.6 GA came out, which was only two years, two months after 5.5. Uh, and the head of MySQL Engineering, uh, who previously ran MySQL Cluster, who you may remember got releases out, uh, also uh, has been quoted as saying, we actually finish features now and don't merge things that don't work. Uh, and this is sort of a revolutionary thing to present at a conference. And somehow that got past various levels of Oracle legal uh, to be able to say that at the front of a conference, which is great. Um, so 5.6 is out. And it, it, personal opinion, the best GA release so far. And it's getting better. So it really is sort of testament to development process improvements. In April, SkySQL, uh, which other MySQL executives left Sun and Oracle to went and start a company to do MySQL service consulting and development, which is oddly like a large part of the business model of MySQL. So essentially, they quit, took a bunch of money they made, and tried to do the same thing again, uh, and got venture capital for it, uh, acquires Monty Program. So whether this is a damnation on the financial viability of like a hacker business model and what Monty was doing there, I'll leave up to other people to work out. Um, but SkySQL now acquires Monty program. So MariaDB is really just yet another corporate-backed MySQL variant. Uh, there's been a lot of fuzz going on about what ha this means for MariaDB trademarks and copyrights and the like. Good luck figuring that out. None of the experts in the field can figure it out. And SkySQL is being quiet. So who the hell knows? There's also a MariaDB foundation, which seems to not have the trademark. So who knows? And that's sort of the latest news. If we look at present day, present day we have MySQL 5.6, which is the current stable release of MySQL uh, from Oracle. So there's Oracle MySQL 5.6, uh, which is out there, which is kind of mature, and no one's jumping up and down about anything particularly being broken. So yay, this is much different than just about every GA version ever, uh, which was loosely described as, you know, if you remember 5.0 GA, 5.6 is like so trouble-free. We also have MariaDB 5.5, which is a current stable release. And this is out of, I will say, SkySQL for reasons that will become apparent in a minute. Uh, and this is a current stable release out there. And they're working on 10.0. And there's also Pocona Server 5.6. So Pocona, the company I work for, still has their own branch. So it's basically MySQL plus patches and performance improvements, relatively small delta. And got a 5.6 release out on time, too. There's also this new player in the world, which is Galera Replication. So Galera is a library to do active-active uh, HA uh, with MySQL, and to do that in a really easy to use and deploy way. And it's basically doing what MySQL cluster has not done. right? MySQL cluster is like, hey, clustered MySQL, yeah. And the usual answer is, no, actually, that's not what you want. 
just because it didn't solve everyone's use case. Galera solves way more use cases than MySQL cluster sort of ever has so far, and becomes much easier of a drop-in solution as out there. And both Bacona and uh, Maria have variants of the servers with Galera in there, and Galera do publish some binaries for uh, Oracle MySQL too. But what about an open source community? This is something that is talked about so much in the MySQL community around there that it's like making my eyes bleed. Uh, is there a development community at all? Has this changed? Well, I had a look at the Oracle MySQL 5.7 tree, and 125 people have commits in the BZR tree there. Pretty due to do that. There is at least 125 people at Oracle in some way or another working on MySQL, right? And that's just the current dev release. Uh, and that's actually probably a slightly old 5.7 uh, release. Uh, Non-Oracle commits are hard to come by. It's hard to come by a code that has come into the 5.7 developer release from people outside Oracle. Uh, I looked at the stable releases of MySQL 5.5, and there's about two people there. So there's about a couple of commits and, and a code that's come in from external inside the stable release of 5.5. So people can actually get bug fixes in directly of their own patch, and not just sort of inspired by or pointed out by. MariaDB 10.0, I did stats on it. So the next MariaDB release has 17 people working on it, around 17 people. Um, that's it. From the difference from five, MariaDB 5.5 to 10.0, it's about 17. Uh, people that are outside Monty programs like SkySQL around that acquisition, really hard to come by. It is hard to actually pinpoint those contributions in the source tree. Part of this is maybe they're not really clear at doing attribution on where some of the code comes from. But if you look through there and what's going in there, it's like the people don't really exist. Uh, it's a couple of people. I looked at 5.5 in the stable release of MariaDB 5.5 and I could find about three people who contributed external patches. So really, uh, Oracle and Sky, or sorry, Maria, uh, Oracle and Maria are about the same level for external contributions. There is no difference. You're getting the same amount of contributions from each, uh, into each. Um, all work inside MariaDB stuff has been merged from Oracle or from Sky people that I can find. Uh, I am absolutely welcome to be proven wrong if anyone can show me real, true evidence of actual BZR commits. <laughs> That's what I'm interested in. Uh, the big bits that came into MariaDB from elsewhere were like storage engines or existing modules are coming in from other companies and these are occasionally synced. But actual any core code or on the engines that are in there now, it doesn't really happen. Um, yes, external developer community, largely a myth, unfortunately. Hopefully it improves, hopefully it improves. The problem is that um, Oracle's corporate policy, which in no way MySQL will ever change, uh, is sucks, is the best way to put it. Question? Um, I did run the numbers for how many non-Pacona people put into Pacona server, and it's roughly the same. It's again two or three. Um, yeah, it's about two or three, which we make no sort of concerted effort to really do that so much, but people propose patches, and at the times we have taken them. And sometimes we've rewritten the patches. But really, if you look at actual commits that go in, it's, it's roughly the same. Yeah, because of some BZR issues, it was harder to run the analysis. Um, but yeah. So for security related, Oracle's policy sucks. They don't talk about it and just suddenly announce it and never point out the actual patch that fixes CVEs or anything like that. That's awful. Uh, security through obscurity is dumb and Oracle should change their policy. Um, quite simple. They won't, it is a giant company that is coming from such a high level of this is how you do things at Oracle that really it's like MySQL what? It is such a small part of the business. So that's unlikely to change in the near future. Maria scores a little better here. Uh, but of course, it's still affected by all the MySQL issues. So really, you're slightly better for some CVE occasionally, rather than largely better. Uh, Pacona largely follows Oracle releases, so it's roughly the same. And we take MariaDB patches when possible. So is MySQL dying? Absolutely not. Healthy, healthy, healthy. Many people working on it. Um, there's probably more people putting code into MySQL at Oracle than it has been at any time in the point ever, um, and into important areas as well. Is Oracle a good custodian? Not too bad, certainly no worse than anyone else. Not ideal, but no worse than anyone else uh, that has been. So that's my honest opinion. Uh, if we look at the code size over years uh, and releases, uh, so I've done the first GA release of each minor release versus the final one. Uh, you'll notice that 4.1 had a huge jump. That's when MySQL cluster came in with its half a million lines of code and its test suite larger than my eyes am. Um, and then we had sort of steady growth over time. One interesting thing really is that in the 5.5 series, the code didn't really grow, right? There wasn't this huge growth of code through stable releases in 5.5, which could suggest that perhaps things weren't severely broken and needed a bunch of code added to make them worse. Uh, better, yes, 
That was a Freudian slip. Um, we also see that in 5.6, uh, in the new 5.6 GA, it had the largest code size jump of any MySQL release since 4.1 with the introduction of MySQL cluster. So at the very least, Oracle has people typing out lines of code. <laughs> and more lines of code in each one. But it actually features at work. And there's a steady growth. If you look at, I put the, the several 5.7 developer release milestones there, and it's model, mo, uh, modest code growth with each new release, which is really promising. So it means it's probably not introducing rubbish. It's probably actually being carefully tested and introducing things that work. This is for the storage engine code size. You can see InnoDB here had various amounts of refactoring along the years and then had this jump in 5.6 and has small growth in 5.7. And the reason it has small growth in 5.7 is refactoring. I've looked at the patches. It's awesome. They're doing some really essential refactoring. My iZem has stayed steady. It is effectively dead. My prediction is my iZem will be deprecated any major release now. Right? I wouldn't be surprised if it was deprecated in 5.7. iZem was, stayed steady, died. Heap, the in-memory one, has like not changed forever. MariaDB lines of code. So I've plotted this against MySQL lines of code, which is the red one. MariaDB one has grown and sort of jumped. And it turns out MySQL is catching up. And the reason I would say they're catching up is they're incorporating the same features that were going to be in 5.6, uh, sorry, 6.0. They're sort of backporting those and sort of making them work. And that adds some code. So that's sort of where they're converging there. Uh, the delta, this is in pure more lines of code, uh, which is not diff stat or anything, because that's actually a horrendous thing to massage. And it's much easier to explain diff stat total numbers difference rather than this is how I massage the diff stat results and here's my giant orc lines. Uh, the MariaDB delta has gone up and then it's gone down a little bit uh, with 10.0 there from MySQL. Uh, I, MariaDB 10.0 is taking a long time to get there, so we'll see what happens. Uh, but you know, I'm not sure when anything from MySQL 5.7 will hit Maria. That's open the air, who knows. Versus test size, this is one interesting thing. Total lines of code is blue, total dot test lines, which is basically SQL statements run against the server and tests over time. If you remember how I was talking about how bad the quality rolls about 5.0 and 5.1, guess what? We can see this giant leap in test code size inside stable releases of 5.0 and 5.1 increasing tests, right? This was like, oh my god, everything's broken, we need tests. And with the really mod modest growth early on, uh, corresponds to, hey, it all worked perfectly due to A, there not being many features, and two, if there's no tests to fail, then really the tests can't fail. So there's astronomical growth in test suite size. And the good news is, if you look at 5.7, it's steady growth with code size. So there's some good steady growth. And this excludes things like random query generator, performance benchmarking, performance regression tests, and InnoDB crash safety and all of that. That's excluded from this thing. Uh, I compare against MariaDB. Um, so if we're looking at uh, MySQL as the yellow line uh, for test suite size, uh, and there's a big jump in MariaDB when it comes to 10.0 and the like, because they incorporated a storage engine called TokuDB, which had half a million lines of tests for itself. Right? So it turns out the TokuDB guys actually care somewhat about testing their storage engine, which is a revolutionary idea, um, at least novel. So the little red one is excluding that. And with the new MySQL 5.7 releases and the like, it's actually catching up and sort of overtaking. So either with the, even with the sort of additional features that MariaDB claims to have, MySQL is still roughly the same amount of tests as it, and in fact, even more uh, going forward. So how well tested these extra features are in Maria is open to uh, interpretation. If you look at present adoption of uh, various uh, uh, variants, um, MySQL 5.5 is, in Debian at least, is by far and away the absolute leader. Uh, I'd graph it, but then everyone else is a flat line, but they're not in Debian too. Um, the numbers are sort of still small there, and you can see adoption here, there, and everywhere, so it's a bit really hard to measure what the true adoption is. But there's definitely adoption of uh, Maria and uh, Pocona around still, but still the overwhelming majority are MySQL. A different story with Galera-based distributions. Um, so Pocona server, uh, so Pocona Extra DB cluster is kind of a clear leader in the double digit numbers from Popcon. Uh, so they're not as uh, reliable as you may think versus the Maria ones. And we'll see how that goes further on. But there's a lot of sort of uh, uh, momentum behind Extra DB cluster there. So what about the future? The future, MySQL 5.7, Oracle does not talk release dates. I will, because I've plotted out over time what the gaps are between major versions. And I predict that in February 2015, MySQL 5.7 will be GA. I could possibly put many, I'm almost certain I could put money on it that would be like uh, before uh, like the April conference, around the April conference in, in uh, 2015, and I think I'd, I'd win that money easily. Um, there's many 
uh, inefficiencies and flaws in how Oracle develops software and interacts with the outside world. But I think 5.7 will be, again, a solid release that actually removes the reliance to ever use my ISAM for anything, uh, which is great. Uh, and you know, will be, again, the next release. Pocono Server will continue to follow the Oracle releases. will be sort of some extra features, guided for real production, extra performance work and the like, uh, probably with closer cooperation from Oracle uh, and with Oracle on various things, uh, and will never become a fork in its own right. It will always be, you know, sort of a distribution. So as Red Hat is to kernel.org, right? That would be it. MariaDB 10.0. I'm guessing it, they will label it GA around Q1 2014, so sometime in the next several months. Uh, it could spill out a bit more, and whether that's sort of GA, GA quality or not, I actually don't know. I'm not quite sure what will happen there. The Delta sort of, this is really the make or break release for Maria, right? If they screw this up, they're dead. If they manage to do it okay, then they may actually uh, get out a bit longer. SkyScore does a whole bunch of venture capital, which like venture capital money can take a while to burn through as well. So they may, you know, uh, depending how they go. The Delta may be sm smaller, but there's differences in core components, right? So it's also hard to tell what's new in Maria 10 versus, you know, MySQL 5.6 versus Maria previous one. So it's actually hard for a user to sort of make an intelligent decision about a bunch of these things. Uh, it's now a company-backed project pretty much, or essentially. Uh, features in MySQL 5.6 and 5.7 uh, implemented differently than how MariaDB has implemented some of the same features or similar ones in MariaDB 10. Uh, so this creates interesting things, especially around replication. Um, when your replication code is deviating, actually moving back and forwards between things is going to get increasingly hard. So if MariaDB to MySQL back and forward will probably get increasingly hard or increasing corner cases. Like there is currently some on-disk incompatibility issues that are kind of like, oh, we should fix that. And the way doing especially um, global transaction IDs and replication uh, works between the two, that could be getting quite interesting. Interesting uh, as in may you lead an interesting life. <laughs> so what should I run is the big question. People ask, who has the question of what should I run? Yep, a bunch of people. MySQL, unless there's a really good reason to go somewhere else. Definitely not NoSQL for the sake of NoSQL. You know, if you watch the video about it being web scale and you decide to do it from that, I, may you have an interesting life. <laughs> so Pocono Server is a really good option because it's really close to the MySQL releases, gets out um, full disclosure. I work for Pocono um, and have spent a lot of time on Pocono Server, so full disclosure there uh, is a really good option. And I'd say MariaDB if there's some specific feature you need. If there's some real reason there to go and use that now, if there's something you need there, but honestly, there probably isn't a feature you need. Is, is my guess, right? Be careful being able to switch back and forth, right? Actually, vendor lock-in could be a thing that's like on purpose or accidental if you sort of use the wrong things. And this is true of all variants and everything there. Some transitions are easier than others, but it is definitely, going to Maria is like going to a new major MySQL release. There may be things you have to look out for, but we'll see how they go. They have had some solid releases too. MySQL 5.6 is definitely greater than 3.23. We're in a much better place now than we were so many years ago, <laughs> it's all that money's gone. You should have made it 4-0. <laughs> you should have made it 4-0. Um, so that's roughly, I think I'll, I'll, I'll stop for some questions, uh, but I wanted to cover a few things that I haven't covered. I haven't covered the cold train in a Russian developer meeting, uh, including one of the Russians going, why would you think we live like this? We do not live like this. Uh, there's a story that I've redacted for sanity and an image I've redacted to help people's careers. Uh, the developer meeting at a Russian insane asylum, we didn't cover that. People fighting for tents and sleeping bags on a Cancun beach. Uh, someone emailing the company strategy to a competitor on a projector in front of a room, I didn't cover that. Uh, story redacted because um, everyone in the room would be offended, including me. Uh, someone screaming, it's not a bug. Uh, and then, of course, stories about how about we all quit. Uh, that was at least two times, nearly three. <laughs> which is uh, definitely one for the bar. And all the salmiaki, which is like black aniseed vodka, uh, which I think nearly killed everyone, is probably the cause of all the ills in the MySQL world. Uh, and also, I've saved you all an awful rendition of a Swedish drinking song. <laughs> but um, I can't remember all the words, but I'm sure somebody does. So that... Hail and go, yeah, man. Oh, no, I nearly sang it. Um, cool. Well, hopefully we have uh, about negative 35 seconds for questions, but we should totally do that. And people who want a book should, like, come up and have a good... Do we have questions? Cool. Uh, so, about security, um, how does then Oracle and then Oracle 5.6 interact with Pocono? Um, how customers get PCI compliance? Ah, so 
I can talk for uh, uh, Procona. Uh, we have consultants who know about PCI compliance, uh, which is not me. <laughs> it's like, oh, look, that's hard. I'm so glad there's consultants who know that. Um, that's what they get the money for. Um, but yeah, so basically, uh, when it comes to like security updates and the like, well, it's you have to follow the vendor, as with any software you're deploying. And you can do PCI compliance with just about anything else. And I have a feeling Florian is going to have some knowledge on it here, unless he has a different question. Oh, well, he has a different question. But yeah, there's, there's consultants that will help to do that. And people do do PCI compliance with MySQL now and have done for many years. So yeah, it's not really a problem. Okay. Yeah. Was it? I already have one, so go ahead. Cool. So the community and the company is one big cluster, so there's a problem as well. Do you think the future is in the MySQL and DB cluster, or is it Galera, or any other? Uh, is the future in MySQL cluster, which is NDB, or Galera cluster? My answer will be both. They'll be both. It depends on your application. Galera is the most drop-in active-active clustering. Uh, and all the data must fit on, e fit on each individual machine, right? MySQL cluster is getting more and more features that make it increasingly a general purpose database as well. And it also does partitioning across machines. And it has the benefit of in-memory uh, data as well. So it really depends on your application. If you have some application now that's running against InnoDB and you want an active-active cluster now, I would say Galera is going to be your least problem, right? If you're happy with how the app's running and performance, totally there. That would be the easiest one there. But if you have other apps, then totally NDB is great. And like, I worked for years on NDB, so like, totally should use it for everything. But I will also acknowledge that it's not for every app. <laughs> cool. I think that's probably it. So thank you. I can around for more questions. And people should have books, because I'm not taking them home. So if you're the urge you want to know about high performance MySQL, come and get one now. <laughs>